boost of my award. You know, so I got the top eight percent for Douglas Elliman in the country. Congrats! Thank Congrats. you. What's up, everybody? Today we have Kevin De Silva with us to shed some advice to other real estate agents, as well as talk about some of the things that he's doing in his current market of Los Angeles, West LA, the South Bay, West LA, Los Angeles, and uh, yeah. So before we jump into that, Kevin, why don't you just give us a you know couple of sentences, who you are, what you do, what you like, what you hate. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, obviously Kevin De Silva. I, my office is in Brentwood. I work the West side of Los Angeles primarily. Um, I love surfing. That's why I live by the beach. It is a passion of mine. And one aspect that I love about real estate is being of service to my clients. Like, uh, I do a lot to give back to my community, charity work, stuff like that. So it's, you know, very important to me that I get my clients the best result, not because, you know, for a pride aspect, but it actually brings me a lot of satisfaction that they're happy. So you talked about three things. One of them was sports, which was lifestyle. surf yeah. and soccer <laughs> yeah. lifestyle. You talked about real estate and you talked about philanthropy. Yeah. And I think that it's huge that business is not just business yeah. and you're not, you know, throwing away some of the things that you love, especially if they bring you joy, mm -hmm. whether that be, you know, providing extra value to your clients because you want to see them happier. You want to see them make a great investment, but actually letting them know, Hey, like I like surfing. Yeah. I like soccer. Like why? Because other people will want to work with you because they like those things as well. And now you're working with people who like you and you don't have to be somebody that you're not a lot of new agents that are coming into the business. What would you say they're doing wrong in that regards? Meaning they jump into, I just got my license. Buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. I need a client, need a client, yeah. commission check, commission check, commission check. What well, are yeah. they doing wrong? That's the exact, actually, the aspect that they're doing wrong. Uh, and I've met some agents recently who are new in the business, and it's like, I need a deal. It's like, I need a paycheck. It's like, well, if that's all you're after, then this is going to be a fruitless business for you. You're going to, you know, it's... I know, right? <laughs> like, and, and, and the aspect is, if that's what you're going after, they're going to smell it on you. And so what, what would you call that? Uh, there's a there's mission a, breath. Yeah, there yeah. it is. You know, there it is. It's like you reek of commission. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that agent. Or the lack of. <laughs> so it's the agent that essentially is willing to say or do anything thinking that this is going to get me a paycheck. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, there's that aspect, you know, trying to push deals through. Um, and don't get me wrong. Like sometimes you have to think outside the box, you know, like I'm not simply after the paycheck, but at the same time I have certain clients who are looking for a product and you know it's not always readily available and i say hey look i think these people would be the best people to su submit like an unsolicited offer but you know it's not from the perspective of hey you know i need a paycheck it's from the perspective of my clients need a property you might be interested in selling your home and i know they're willing to pay you more money got it so to wrap that up into one sentence what would the one piece of advice you would give a new agent mm. um, coming into the business what's that one thing that most agents when they come into the business are not doing yeah. that you should be doing. You should. Uh, so just come in from the mentality of it's not about you. Got you it. Know, come in from the mentality. Of it's about your client. When you make it about your client, their happiness, their success, you're going to have more clients than you know how to deal with. You know, like it's, it's just the reality when it's not about you and it's about the client, they're going to feel the service. They're going to feel the love and they're going to refer you to all their friends and family and your pipeline will be full. So on the flip side, you're saying you need to make sure that you're worried about their happiness, their success, yeah. putting them first, doing things that are going to make them happy. And, and what that means is, hey, if they say, hey, Kevin, I, I'm, I like 123 Main Street. I think it's a phenomenal house. And you go and you look at it and you go, ooh, that's going to be a terrible deal. That's you stepping out and say, hey, John Doe, Jane Doe, actually – look at the history here, look at this. Yeah. Even if that's not going to get you paid, knowing that A, they're going to be happy. And not only are they going to be happy, but they're, they're going to trust you even more. So more than likely after that deal closes, 
they're willing to actually refer you. Hey, like we were actually going to buy 123 Main Street and Kevin said that wasn't a great deal. And look at the house that he got us in. Like that's the type of agent you should go to as opposed to, oh yeah, 123 Main Street closed and it closed in 21 days. And now we just realized, oh my goodness, like yeah. we didn't see this. We didn't do this. Why didn't the agent tell us this? That guy's the worst person in the world. <laughs> Never going to send anybody to him. Oh, yeah. No, I've learned. Uh, I mean, it's a highly litigious business. I've learned inspections are key. But at the same time, there are certain health uh, aspects that I'm aware of through doing business by coincidence and also seeing reports. Uh, I've had clients try to buy homes. You know, they have little kids that try to buy homes near a gas station. And I say, look, I don't recommend it. Here, read this article. You know, and, and they read it. And they're like, oh, my gosh, I can't be near a gas station. There are chemicals that are come out of the gasoline and the petro that are known to cause cancer and are more harmful for little kids than it is for adults to live near a gas station. So it's like, you know, like your family matters to me. The great thing is, is, is if you prospect enough and you market the right way, you will have enough clients that if your clients don't care about you, you could be like, I don't want to work with these people. Thank you. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the goal. I mean, it's not like you're not doing anything when you're working. Oh, yeah. Like, and, and that's why social media to me is such a huge player because social media is not just about you know the sold listing it's not just about the the happy ending it's about showing all of the different things that you're doing not just in business but in your personal life as well so that way people either that are currently working with you or hopefully future business that you're attracting through social media says hey look this person does this 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 mm -hmm. this 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 oh and i also know about their family yeah. i know they go to disneyland i know you know they go snowboarding or surfing and shark diving shark diving <laughs> um and like that's huge because if you're just constantly that clip art image, that clip art or i, I always say you know if you're googling you know different comments or captions that you would never write or never say like that's going to catch on so yes when you say i'm on vacation with my family that person's going to think oh yeah vacation huh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they, yeah he doesn't want to answer the phone today but if you're showing that no i'm a family person or no i do this or hey no like these are the things that we do and by the way look at me phone calling or and yeah. prospecting and look at look at all the marketing stuff that we're doing and look at all the brand awareness stuff that you see all over the place and look at new sign and this and behind the scenes here and blah 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 and they're like this person does a lot how do they do it yeah um okay let's uh ask you another piece of advice that not that you would give to a new agent but let's say th there's an agent I don't know, five years in the business, 10 years in the business that has just hit the point. I don't know how, how to, I, I don't know what to do. I, 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 I don't know what to do. I'm not getting any business. My business has kind of died off. Like somehow I, I was in the business for five years and mm -hmm. it was great. And, you know, now with the market, the way that it is, Hey, you know, people just aren't calling me out of the blue. Yeah. I actually have to work now. <laughs> Uh, what would just be that one thing that most agents are not doing that they need to do or they're going to have to go find uh, another career? Okay. Uh, I don't think it's one thing, but it's one activity you could do for yourself. So okay. it's like, it's different for every person, Definitely, you know, cause you know, I'm, I'm great on door knocking. Like I go out door knocking and you know, I can turn a piece of business just from one hour door knocking, you know, so I really should be doing it more. Um, but the aspect, yeah, right. <laughs> The aspect is uh, look at what worked for you okay, and go back to that. And if what worked for you isn't working anymore, then find something else. So you're saying that if a penny starts rolling in front of you, but you've always had nickels in your pocket, you probably should not worry about the penny. Yeah. Let it keep rolling and keep doing the things that have been working for you and don't be distracted by hey, you can sign up for this phone calling service or, hey, you can get this person in this country who's going to do this for you and you have to do this and yada, 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 yada. Here's one thing. My business has taken off from consistent email marketing. Okay. And and people think like, oh, you should do it twice a week or twice a, twice a month. Okay, that might be great. I email my database once a week. Give us an example of an email that <laughs> you would send out. So like you could do a branding one a market update one, and then I usually do at least two property ones 
a week. And when you're saying one, you're saying emails. Yeah, yeah. So and they, those emails are coming from Gmail or using uh, a no, specific I, provider? I use Imprev, which is provided to me from Douglas Elliman, but okay. you could use MailChimp, you could use BombBomb. I mean, there are all sorts of email providers out there. What do the emails <clears> look like? <throat> um, so it differs. So I have a, a coming soon email, which is one of my better performing emails, and I've just sold email, which is one of my best performing emails. They're going after two different kinds of buyers, like two different kinds of clients. The coming soon are looking for buyers who are in the market. The just sold, and it doesn't really matter where you sold the property, are looking for sellers. So I have a landing page for the coming soon. I have a landing page for the just sold. Now, the coming soon uh, goes to a countdown ticker. So you just literally create the countdown ticker, which has a brief description. You, you do like a headline, a subheadline, and a description, which I actually end up using and rolling into the description I use for the multiple listing service. Um, but that one, I'll usually generate, you know, it will go out to, I have like 1,700 emails, and I'll usually get a feedback of about 10 to 15 people inquiring about the property. So that happens about once a month. Then my just sold, this is actually more important because I, I closed three pieces of business last year from people in my database who I hadn't spoken to in a while, who weren't answering my phone calls, who all of a sudden saw my just sold. It says, you know, and I always give some kind of snippet about the situation. I tell a story. So my, my emails are very story related. So it gets down uh, to the bottom. It says, you know, curious about your new home value. Try this, enter your address. And usually I'll get about three or four every email. So about once a month, I'm getting three or four seller leads, you know, from my database of people who aren't necessarily answering the phone. Now it comes in, it triggers in my phone, it shows up. I, I look it up, I say, you know, a lot of times because I do run other seller ads. I'm like, well, that, that address is out of the area. And I'll, I'll click it, I'll go into my database and I'll call that person right away. And sure enough, the answer. And just like that, you triggered somebody, you, you, became aware to somebody in your database who is ready to make a decision either now or in the near future who wasn't answering your calls, wasn't responding to your texts, but they saw an invitation to do business, you know, or, or to see what their home value was. And all of a sudden now you're going to be selling the property. I thought we were going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, like a, like I'm doing the, the email marketing, which we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, cause real quick, one thing I'm taking, with Jonathan's inspiration, uh, I am adding other aspects to my email marketing where I'm actually having ads run that support the email marketing that then support the conversation I have. So I'm using marketing as a way, we talked about this in the beginning of the conversation, as a way to forward my conversation when I actually do talk to people. Because you know, like sometimes people don't answer the phone because they're not ready to do something. And the one day they answer the phone and they're ready to to do business. Now, the entire time they've been seeing your ads online, they've been getting your emails, and they're like, I wanna work with him, I just wasn't ready to answer his phone call, and they answer the phone, and they say, hey, I wanna work with you. Now, if you hadn't been touching them along the way, they might still not answer your phone call, they might be working with their friend's realtor. Yeah. So, um, the example for the, the branding post that I did was uh, we did the custom audience, and uh, my custom audience is actually performing better than boosting it to my page likes, boosting it as, as a geo farm around my, my actual farm, like a geo fence. Uh, and so I'm getting better results from my custom audience of people who already know me on online than I was from other things. And it's all in support of this email and the conversation. So as I talk to people, it's just creating brand awareness. So rather than chasing new leads, you're developing the relationships of the people that for whatever reason, they know you, you have their contact information. And like you said, it's not a just a, a one click, you know, hey, this works for everybody. There's there's different things that you're doing. You're adding in brand branding pieces, yeah. you're doing emails, you're doing phone calls. It's very Im imperative that, uh, you know, you'll hear about it all the time. Like you can't just go on to social media and say, hey, I'm not going to pick up the phone anymore because social media is going to Hero. Hey, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm not going to send out emails anymore because I'm the best social media person. <laughs> this, like there's tons of different things that you have to put into this basically roadmap to say, Hey, look, if my end result is X amount of buyers and X amount of sellers at the end of the year, 
How am I going to do that? And work your way backwards. And then you can start plugging in, hey, I sh- you know, th- they said that they want to sell in a year. Well, let's put some things in front yeah. of them so that way they can see what's going on. Not just from a, hey, are you ready to, you yeah. know, get your home oh, value now? The- are you ready to get your home value now? Are you ready uh, to get your home value now? So yeah, Are you ready to get your home value now? <laughs> How about this one? Do you want to buy or sell a property? <laughs> like that, all right, uh, the piece of advice that I was giving, stop saying, do you want to buy or sell a property? <laughs> hey, I'm at Disneyland right now. I'm having such a great time. Do if you you're ready buy to sell? buy or sell a property, let me know. <laughs> Just listening to this big old castle behind me right now. Like, this is a phenomenal buy. Ha ha, JK, JK, LOL. But really though, like, if you want to buy or sell, I'm your person. Like, Shut up. I'm talking to people. In fact, I'll leave Disneyland right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you actually want me to leave right now. Let okay. Me, okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, family. <laughs> Gotta go. No, but like, uh, you know, the aspect is, is uh, having that and, and I'm actually having it where like my marketing pieces are supporting each other. So like the message really drives in, you know, um, like I said, creating brand awareness. And how much are you spending? Because somebody's going to watch this and they're going to go, I think it's oh, $4 yesterday. Exactly, right? Somebody's going to watch this and go, oh, brand awareness. Like, I don't have time for that. I don't have money the for that. The email marketing is free, by the way. Okay, so you're doing email marketing, which is free. You're doing door knocking, which is sweat free. equity. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you're phone calling. You're doing phone calling. Which How I much pay does phone that cost? Bill. I don't know. My phone bill is like $100 bill. a month. Okay. <laughs> and you're doing some branding ads right now on Facebook that are supporting everything that you're yeah. doing. And you've spent how much? Four dollars. Four dollars on a branding ad, and each engagement you're getting. I, I basically have it scheduled. I'm running three different brand or the the same branding ads to three different target markets for two dollars a day. But I don't have a thousand dollars a day to run f- Facebook ads. Do- oh, I mean Facebook. You know, it, it's free marketing until you pay to market it to boost it. So I boost it out of my my Facebook business page. Did you? Know, this is a this is a very startling stat. <laughs> The National Associations of Realtors released in their digital age report of 2018 where leads come from. I've had two this year just from Facebook free though, like out of my database. So that actually supports their data yeah, because their data suggests that the highest percentage of leads, 46% came from organic social media posts. Yeah. Paid social media posts, what would you venture to guess? Unless you've already if it, like you've already read the article. I sold one. Oh, what would I venture what, what, to guess? Yeah. If I sold one for 19, I'm going to say 5%. 16%. Ah, I'm under the weather with it. <laughs> yeah, but I think the 46% is huge because what that shows is that, hey, this is four times essentially better than just doing ads. Now, yeah. that's not saying that ads don't work, and that's not saying that, hey, you should not do ads. But what that is reinforcing is, Stop using the excuse that you can't do this because you don't have a budget. Oh you can goodness, post yeah. on social media. You don't YouTube? have YouTube. Yeah, you you don't have to have a professional videographer. You don't have to have all these different things. But I do think that it's imperative that your social media strategy is on point to where. And when I say strategy, it's not again. It's you have to have some type of plan other than hey, let me just continue to ask whether you they want to buy, buy or sell a house, <laughs> like. Like, hey, I'm going to do X amount of family posts or, hey, I'm going to do X amount of videos or, hey, I'm going to go live. You know, all these things are free. Mm-hmm. You know, there's LinkedIn, tons of different apps Instagram. that can help you make your stuff look better for free. Yeah. So stop giving me and stop using the excuse that, hey, you know, we want to, you know, do all these different things, but we just don't have the budget. Uh, yeah. And actually for agents, you know, you go to these events, you become friends with people. A lot of my agent to agent referrals come from people. They watch what I'm doing. They see me at the events and, you know, they don't even, they don't even post it, you know, on any of these Facebook pages that have, you know, referrals, you know, um, they just call me and say, Hey, I need you to help a client. Yeah. Is that okay? You know, so it's, you know, that is free last year. Um, you know, three deals, fifty thousand dollars net GCI. So that, like, what my ten ninety nine would show, uh, just on agents referring me through from Facebook, and okay. then another three deals from Facebook itself. One of which was the only one that was paid. So what you're saying, and what a lot of people need to realize, is that social media can help you. Yeah, 
is there a lot that can happen in social media? Yes. Do you have to do it all? No. Do you have to do something? Yes. And if you don't know how to do something at this point, that's Watch okay. Jonathan. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but 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 really though, it's you don't have to do all these different things. You definitely need to know what's happening. Yeah. But I I definitely think that you know, as long as you have a, a certain plan, like that's okay. Like if we go back into my calendar, like we have a certain plan. This type of post is going out on this day. Yeah. We're doing this on this day. Hey, leave that spot open for whatever might happen during the week. Hey, yeah. let's do this. Hey, let's not do this. Hey, you know, let's just continue to roll the camera and wherever it fits in the next few weeks, we can, you know, plug it in. See, um, that, that's the difference between you and me because he's crushing it. Jonathan's crushing it on social media. I'm, I'm like... Oh, you know, I'm out at a home inspection. Well, you know, just randomly like, oh, let's do this. You know, let's get, you know, let's get the home inspector, you know. So like I'll be out doing something. I'll say this is a perfect time to post. I don't have it as strategically planned at you, as you, but I know that with certain opportunities that are important to clients, like, oh, we need to, we need to record. And, and so the, the piece of advice that I would give on that is that at, as long as you have your phone with you, yeah. you, you can always hit record. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about posting it that second, right? Oh, Facebook Live is great. You could do a Facebook Live, but let's say for whatever reason, you don't have the time. Maybe it's noisy. You don't have service, whatever it is. You know, all the different excuses yeah. that you're going to use to not go live. Um, you can always hit record. You can always put that, you know, video together afterwards. Um, but I think that it's huge that you have a bank of all of your different videos that you've done. Yeah. So then that way, hey, maybe you've only got 10 seconds at the property. Well, you can put those 10 seconds of you at the property or you with the inspector. And, and you can couple that with maybe some prospecting that you've done, yeah. maybe some different marketing. And now you've have this 60 second video of, holy heck, Kevin does a lot of stuff for this property, right? So I think the, the, the sentence that a lot of people use is, a lot of people say, hey, what content should I put out there? And, and we like to say that it's not content creation. It's documentation. Yeah. You're doing so much as an agent. You really are. Yeah. I mean, if you come to think about all the different things that you do, there's so much that it might seem hard, but just take your phone out and hit record. If it's of something else, whatever. If it's of yourself, who cares? They know what you look like. They know what you sound like. And <laughs> hopefully, not anybody. And, and hopefully, you know, they know they know about your family. They know about the things that yeah. you like. It's not like they're going to you know. If you posted a video of yourself surfing today, you wouldn't get anybody calling you. Go, oh, I didn't know you like surfing. I can't work with you. Like that wouldn't happen. Yeah, they cheer me on. Exactly. They know so, I'm passionate about it. Got it. <clears throat> I think it's super big that uh, my mission just to kind of give you a little bit more of a back end is there's tons of different cliches that are out there. There's tons of different stereotypes about who a realtor is. Yeah. They're this person who is always on vacation, <laughs> who doesn't work, who, who doesn't care about me, who doesn't care about <laughs> me, who doesn't answer their phone. That's golfing all day. That's that doesn't, all doesn't, these, all doesn't these, know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, keep all it they do is open doors, yeah. you know, like, <clears throat> Uh, all they care about is their paycheck. You know, it, 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 the list goes on. Who is Kevin De Silva, and what does what do you do that makes you stand out as a realtor? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, first and foremost, my clients do come first. Uh, one aspect, and it, it's a very short story. I won't get off tangent with it. Very early in business, it was my second and third deal. We're in the pipe. We're in escrow. You know, so I, it was my first year in business, and. Both of them were falling out. I just signed up for coaching <laughs> and I have this contract fo to fulfill and I'm running out of money. And it was the hardest thing to go to them and give them like, you know, because I have these bills now to pay and say, look, if we don't make it work here, we'll find you another one. Don't worry about it. You know, but that was the right thing to do. So I think at the core, uh, people work with me because I, I don't sugarcoat what I'm telling them, I'll tell them like, this is the right thing to do, or this is the right way to go, regardless of whether it affects me. And I actually uh, have clients who deals don't go through and they still pay me. I mean, it's, you know, but they'll, they'll write me a check. Thank you. And then they come back and do business with me. So 
they appreciate that I advise them to do the right thing. My goal is to make a monumental transformation in the way that people think of a realtor to, to get rid of those stereotypes. What would be a piece of advice that you can give to other agents to say, Hey, you guys should be doing this or you shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing that because at the end of the day, it affects us all. Yeah. You know, when you, when, when I have a crappy agent, like my wish is that person, hopefully they're the one of, you know, 87% that's not going to make it <laughs> in the next five years. And it's true because we, whether we like it or not, you know, a lot of people view their realtors as competitors, but yeah. at the end of the day, you're probably working with realtors more than you're, you're going to be working with clients. Right, you're gonna be you're yeah. gonna meet with more realtors. Oh, yeah. You're gonna do a lot of things. So, what what's a piece of advice that one agent can do that that can help the entire realtor community? Really know your due diligence, and I see it all the time. You know, like an agent from some brokerage that you know charges some you know re really reduced fee will come in and and um, and they're all online and everything. But like they'll come in and you know they'll have one inspection. They'll give me this very basic repair request, and I know I tell my client like we should really make this deal happen you know but it's do your due diligence like know what you're doing you know if you don't if you're just out there having fun you know and and thinking that oh like this is a walk in the park these are people's lives these are people's money and you better believe that if something really goes wrong you're the person they're going to come back and sue definitely and, and you're the reason why we have this bad image of real estate agents yeah because you're walking around all you care is about your commission and, and, you, and you're walking around, you don't, you aren't looking into what they should be looking out after. I mean, it's in the licensing stuff. We read about it when we got licensed. When I renewed my license, I read about it again. You, you say you're actually supposed to read that stuff? <laughs> yeah, you read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you so much. Again, Kevin De Silva is here in uh, West LA. Where can people find you on social media? So Kevin De Silva Realtor on my Facebook. KMD Los Angeles is my tagline and KMD South Bay on on Twitter and, and LinkedIn. Sweet. Well, thank, thank you. you for being here. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, that's it. Sweet. Now we're going to rock out. All right. Hey, everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment. Shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.